Greetings again from Finland uh, from the No Walls, No Labels Festival. Next up, you can join the teaching artists from the Prison, Prison Art Collective in California, who will share the processes involved in designing multidisciplinary distance learning arts courses for incarcerated adults. This will include a walkthrough of a distance learning lesson used in their spring 2020 session. Lastly, attendees will have the opportunity to participate in art making and reflection activities. Please join the conversation by clicking Zoom on the No Wars, No Labels website. Welcome everyone. Hello. Hey. I think we're on. Yes. Oh, uh, we're so excited. Sorry, it's a long day. This is this has been this is our 13 of the No Labels, No Walls Festival, day three. We're so excited. Uh, thank you so much, Marcus from Kukanari, uh, for uh, uh, for hosting and from Finland. Um, we are so excited to have a prison art collective here. I'm Michael from the Strindberg Laboratory from Los Angeles. Um, prison Art Collective is a um, is a nonprofit that works in the prisons um, doing uh, visual art with uh, prisoners, I believe, all across the state. Um, we're so excited to have them. Um, and without that further ado, I'm going to turn over to Alex, Nancy, and everybody else from the Prison Art Collective uh, for them to begin. It's all yours. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Nancy's going to pull up a slideshow presentation that we're going to do. Um, and so I'll let her do that real quick before we get started. But um, before we do get started with our presentation, we just wanted to thank everybody that's here for taking the time out of their day to be here and connect. Um, so thank you and hello to everyone joining us from Zoom and also to those that are watching via live stream. Um, I will say for those that are watching on Facebook or through the live stream, if they wanna participate in some discussion, feel free to join us via Zoom as well. Um, we also wanted to give a big thank you and shout out to the We Are One Festival, No, no Labels, No Walls, the Strindberg Laboratory and Kukanori, and everyone involved in organizing this amazing event where we have this space to come together and share, learn, collaborate, and connect. Um, so today, Nancy and I are going to be talking about the Prison Arts Collective program, like what, what we do, but we're going to really dive into how we handled some of the hurdles that got put into place due to the COVID pandemic. Um, and before we get to that, uh, we're just going to share a little bit about ourselves, starting with Nancy. Hi, everybody. My name is Nancy Wheatseal. I am a teaching artist and part-time coordinator with Prisons Art Collective. I've been with the program for about two years now. And I, a little bit more about myself, my background in uh, my art background and education um, starts at Cal State Dominguez Hills. I graduated with a studio art um, in 2017. I'm an abstract artist, a photographer, and sculptor. I love a lot of colors. Um, you can see a little bit of my work in behind in the picture um, of myself. Um, as you can see, I like a lot of bright colors. I also like touching the material for sculpture. And more recently, I've been uh, working on photography. Um, and that's just a little bit about myself. And we're going to um, pass it on to Alex. Okay. There's me in the corner. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> my name is Alexander Masushige, but feel free to call me Alex. Um, so as far as my educational background goes, I did receive my BA in our education from CSU San Bernardino, which is located in Southern California. And I'm currently finishing up my master's in education and art credential at the University of Redlands in Redlands, California. Um, I'm really interested in social justice, art education, and expanding access to the arts to those that need it, that don't have access to it. And so um, that's what really brought me to this program, which I've been working with for a little over three years. My current role with the program is um, a teaching artist and I work a lot in curriculum development. And then I also lead our facilitator training program, uh, which Nancy and I will describe a little bit more in detail later in the presentation. Um, I also, as um, my art practice, I do have a bit of a background in fashion design. And so a lot of my, my visual artwork, um, I use a lot of fabric and textiles and sewing in that. But I also like to work in oil and watercolor painting. And watercolor painting was actually the first class that I taught in one of our prison sites. So we can go. 
okay. And then Nancy's going to talk a little bit about her, just a little bit more about her. So a little bit more about Prisons Art Collective. Prisons Art Collective is a chapter model. So our headquarters is currently at San Diego State University. So basically we're partnered with different CSUs um, in Southern California. So we currently have CSU Fresno, CSU San Bernardino, and CSU Fullerton, and of course San Diego State. Um, we're looking into opening more chapters in the future as well. Um, some of our classes are multidisciplinary art programs. We also facilitate um, classes where we um, provide um, a class where students can um, lead their own classes. So not only do we provide art classes, but we help our participants learn to develop their own curriculum um, and also practice and um, their art skills and also help others who are interested in the same um, medium or art disciplinary. So for example, we do also have other um, disciplinaries such as like yoga. We also have a music class. One of our pure lit um, students is a musician. So he plays a guitar. So um, our art classes go beyond um, the visual aspect. Um, we are also very collaborative. Um, program. So what that means is that we have our teachers uh, from university, faculty members, students who are also interns, staff members, um, and our artists um, that work with us together um, to create the space um, for our when we have classes. So our model emphasizes um, safe space and creating art and a community which includes that each of our classes have the following art elements. So we have an art history component, an art practice or art activity and reflection, and as well as a safe space. Um, so those are the four elements that are required for each class. And when our classes are led by facilitators, they are um, also, they also provide the same um, elements for their classes as well. And the next slide. Yeah. Um, so this is a cool little pictograph that one of our um, graphic design interns at SDSU created for us, um, which really helps to, to organize our mission, our vision, and some of our core beliefs. Um, I'll just kind of sum up a little bit of it. But um, the driving force of our mission is really about expanding access um, to the transformative power of the arts, um, to those that need it the most. And in our case, we're focusing on providing arts programming in prisons, um, uh, correctional institutions throughout California. So currently we're offering programming at 11 institutions throughout California. Um, and that's a number that we're hoping to grow more as we progress as an organization. So our vision for the future, we, we envision a safer, healthier society where everyone has access to the arts to promote well-being and empowerment. Some of our core beliefs include we believe in the transformative power of art to change lives for the better. We believe in art as a human right. Uh, we believe in providing training, mentorship, and leadership opportunities for the incarcerated, for formerly incarcerated, which are sometimes known as returned citizens. Um, all of our participants, um, we refer to our students as participants rather than prisoners, um, just to try to get rid of that stigma, that barrier right there. Um, and all of our team members inside and outside of the prison as well. We believe in the value of every individual. We value the knowledge, talents, and experience of our participants. We believe in the successful collaborations be between public entities, um, especially partnering with state university systems and the correctional agencies throughout California. And this one is really interesting because um, the Prison Arts Collective is, uh, is unique amongst arts and corrections organizations in California in that we we do have a partnership amongst the Cal State system um, and several locations. Um, and this really allows for students that, students that are going to those universities that are interested in arts education, education in general, or even like nonprofit logistics and management to have the opportunities to really dive in as an intern and really explore the field um, through our program, develop teaching skills, um, understand the workings of a nonprofit organization um, and that's what's really great about a program and actually how I got involved in the program. I started as a art education intern and this program really helped me um, by providing me an opportunity to grow as an educator and to practice teaching art from early in my education. 
Um, and then lastly, we also believe in bridging societal gaps and understanding others through art. Um, slide. So what courses do we offer? I mentioned earlier in the previous slide back um, that we teach several um, classes. Um, so our classes are 15 weeks. Um, so they kind of align with the semester um, that CSUs um, follow as well. And our classes, some of the class, like I mentioned before, some of it's music, some of it's um, yoga. We do have a lot of um, art classes that are for painting and drawing. I do want to mention that these classes were also provided before um, the changes have happened with um, COVID. And so a lot of this information is something that what we provided before. And we will talk a little bit about more what we're doing um, currently now with the changes um, and how we um, were able to solve those. Um, and we also um, are going to talk a little bit about the art facilita facilitator program. Alex can um, explain a little bit more about that too. Yeah. So in addition to our semester long weekly classes um, where we, we would go in our team members would go into the prisons and teach um, a variety of art classes, ranging from drawing to yoga to uh, oil painting. Um, but in the Arts Facilitator Training Program, um, which has become a core part of the Prison Arts Collective, um, it allows the opportunity for practicing artists that already have a pretty strong foundation of art skills and are interested in sharing their passion for the arts with their peers and to others. Um, it's an opportunity for them to take a teacher training course. So um, you can think of it almost like a crash course in our education. Um, and in this program, um, faculty from our chapters, along with teaching artists from our team, will teach an extensive um, teacher training course to these interested students that allow them to develop their teaching skills. Um, and then also, by the end of this course, they construct their own art curriculum that they will eventually teach to a group of their peers. And what's cool about this program is we work with the institution that it's being taught at to create, uh, we, uh, we used, it used to be called like an ILTAG group or IAG group, but it's a space that the students are receiving credit for teaching and participating in these classes. And they have, they have a designated space to teach their classes. And they also have a designated time slot that they meet weekly to, um, for these facilitators to teach classes to their peers. And it's been a great way to uh, cr create, uh, cultivate a community within these prisons um, that continues to like radiate out because more students will come in, more students will transfer to different yards or they might get released and it's just a, it provides an opportunity to create a community around art, learning about art and uh, art making. And then the last uh, type of course that we offer in our program is um, the guest artist workshops and, sorry, my printer is acting funny. <laughs> the guest artist workshops and a scholar program, which I'll tell you a little bit about um, so it's a, it's a program in which we were able to bring in professional artists and scholars from many different fields into the prisons to present about their work. So it could be artwork or they're presenting a lecture, but regardless of what they presented, um, they were engaging students in an activity that was related to the content. So we've had artists that work in painting and glass come in and talk about their work, talk about what inspires them in the art making process. And then we also have done a guest scholar series in which faculty from Cal State San Bernardino from multiple colleges in the university, from anthropology, sociology, business, came in and gave a, um, an awesome lecture on um, their, their subject of expertise during a, a related art activity um, at a few of our sites in California. Yeah, I also wanted to add that um, when we go inside, I feel that the idea is that we're providing um, art history and art um, resources to our participants. But I also wanted to add that we also learn a lot from our participants. They have a lot of um, art skills that they've developed on their own um, or have learned from each other before prior to us going inside class. And they also um, work on art projects um, on their own time. So whether we're in class or outside of class time, they'll um, develop their own artwork as well. Um, and I'm gonna go to the next slide. Okay, so this is a visual for, um, we wanna provide some visual context of what we've been describing. So this is an image of weekly, what a class 
would look like inside one of these institutions. So on the right side of the screen, we have an image of uh, one of our um, sites in Lancaster. Um, this specific um, image showcases one of our teaching artists um, in action. So she is um, providing an image and talking about that history art portion of our class. And you can see our participants are in the background. Um, you know, some of them, someone's holding the note or maybe looking at another previous image prior to the one um, that the our visual artist is um, currently presenting. Um, we also um, add um, at the end of our 15 week courses, we do um, give a certification to our participants. Um, and then the image on the left is the, that visual. So we have a certificate of completion and we, we type out their name. Um, and we also have the teaching artist as well as the faculty director for that chapter sign in on that certificate. Um, and the certificates have become um, also another core part of the program because we, at the end of every 15 week session, we do hold a, a type of graduation ceremony. Um, and for a lot of our participants that have maybe been incarcerated for a long time, it might be the first time that they're receiving something that acknowledges their accomplishments, especially in the field and their educational um, studies. So um, it's become a really great part of the program, something that visualizes and is like materializes their accomplishments. Um, it's something that's uh, also useful for our participants who who do these things called parole boards, where they need they need to show that they have been working towards rehabilitation, and these certificates add to that that file of theirs as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. So again, more visuals just to tie into the text about us describing the programs pre-COVID. Um, so arts facilitator training. Um, on the left, we have like. Uh, a flyer that we used to get students, students to sign up for the program. So it's worth noting that all of our programs are entirely voluntary. No student is ever forced to take our program. They are able to leave at any time if it's not for them. So in order to get students to participate in any of our programs, we do have to generate interest and we do have to get students to sign up for the courses. So this was a flyer that we used to get students to sign up for the arts facilitator training. We taught a couple of years back at Ironwood State Prison in California. Um, and then on the right, you see, uh, I put an image of um, one of our facilitator led classes in action. So this is a facilitator that completed our program. His name is Joe. Um, he teaches a class called Art and Mindfulness at Cal Patria State Prison, where he talks about the spiritual aspects of art, but they also dive into drawing and painting very technically too. He's a very skilled artist. And so he, loved, he had a great passion for the arts and he wanted to take this training. And now he's, been, he's taught several rounds several semesters of students um, since his time. And I believe he was being released pretty soon because he, he finished his time there. But we're fingers crossed for that. But um, yeah, we can go to the next one. Oh, and a guest artist. So some visuals for the guest artist workshops. So again, I talked about the, Nancy and I talked about the guest scholar series program. And during that one, we had like a variety of topics. And then the, on the left is an example of the handout that the students received for one of these presentations. And it was presented by Dr. Brian Heisterkamp and Dr. Julie Taylor, who are professors at Cal State San Bernardino. And they did a presentation on the art of interviewing. So um, again, talking about the creative aspects of, of what their, their um, interests are, but also um, something that is applicable for students to use when they're outside of the class. And this was a really popular presentation in which they got the do's and don'ts of interviews and what to expect and how to navigate an interview and prepare an application and a resume and things like that. Um, and then also the creative part of it, like actually conducting an interview. So there were some really cool activities and our students at um, the California Institution for Men and the California Institution for Women in Chino, California, really love this presentation. So that was an awesome day. And on the right, we have artist, uh, painter, visual artist, Fung Hyun, who was a guest artist with us at the California Institution for Men. Um, she, there's an image of her talking about her artwork um, and her creative process. And also uh, she did a really cool art making workshop with our students as well. Cool. Next. 
So this slide is a little bit of, uh, we wanted to show also some of the work that's been, has been created in the past. So these two images have, were both created at um, California Institution for Women, for short sure we say CIW. And um, the first one on the left <laughs> is called New York Sunrise. And then the one on the right is called Handprints. So you can see um, we provide different um, art medium. So for New York Sunrise, which is on the left, that was in watercolor. And then the one on the right with the handprints, that was acrylic. And did you want to add anything else, Alex? I was going to say, I think the left one was a printmaking class. Oh. <laughs> uh, we, had, we, had a, yeah, we had a teaching artist that, um, even though our supplies are limited of what we're allowed to bring in, we'll talk a little bit more about that too, but um, they figured out a way to do printmaking with a lot of materials. And so it was a great to bring that new medium, that new way to express yourself um, to the women at the California Institution. See, I don't. So a lot of the questions that we do get um, when people hear about like what we do is what does it look like inside? And what does teaching look like? So we provided um, a few uh, bullet points to kind of describe. So starting with the dress code, we do dress, um, and when we go inside the institution, we try to dress, we dress everything in black. So we currently have the t-shirts with a logo. Uh, <laughs> and we um, even dress in black, like even in the sun, like, you know, when it's really sunny during the summer. Um, and the reason behind it is for um, us to not be able to, so we can be able to, for security reasons. So some of these, a lot of these institutions follow the same guidelines where certain um, clothing isn't, um, we're not able to wear. So for example, like jeans are prohibited. Um, reason being is that our participants wear um, clothing is blue uh, and we wanna be able to sub distinguish who's who. So, so for example, the COs, they will dress or correctional officers will dress in um, green. And so um, there's a distinction of like who's who and by wearing all black, um, the institution um, automatically knows that we're not, um, working, we're an outside group coming in. Yeah, and our program, we work across the spectrum of prison levels. So in California, the prisons are uh, defined by security levels one through four, and we work at the range of them. So we're, we're at sites that are multi-levels, but um, depending on the higher level of the prison, it will depend on the, the more thorough security checks that we do. So for example, some of our Fresno locations actually have one of those full on like LAX, um, <laughs> airport like screeners where you step inside and you lift up your hand yeah they have one of those there but um uh, some of the lower security sites it really is uh we they check our bags they make sure we're not bringing in anything we're not supposed to bring in uh, making sure that we have clearance at those sites and making sure that we have our proper identification yeah so that also leads us to material so they also um a lot of we also have to uh submit an inventory to some institutions and other institutions we can simply um just showcase what we have that day and that is uh, i do want to add that there we do have um certain material that we can and cannot bring and that's just for security purposes so for example uh a sharp pencil sharpener would probably would not be uh, acceptable to go inside the institution simply because of the blade and that's just the extra precaution um, for both for everybody and um, other materials are allowed and some aren't and so we've also have had to like adapt in um, what for our art lesson so um, which is a good way for us to be more creative as artists. And um, we have found um, other al alternatives um, to create our class um, as artistically as possible. Yeah, and the teaching location can vary depending on the institution as well. Um, we have an image of it on the next page, but it depends on the site that we're at of what kind of room we're gonna be in. So it's usually not a classroom. We're usually never in a classroom. We're usually in a gym with like a basketball court. Um, we might even be in a cafeteria some days. Um, it just depends on whatever site that we're at. And our classes range uh, approximately three hours, sometimes a little bit more, just and sometimes for cleanup purposes, sometimes we <laughs> it takes us like 15 minutes to clean up and um, we, and to, we try to, um, get it done beforehand, but we also have to count our material as well. And it's a process that is 
brought up at the beginning of each uh, semester. So we go over uh, with our participants that we, with the, our material that we bring in, we count um, right before we distribute it to class. And then after class, we'll make sure we have everything back. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this, would, this is an example photo of a few of our teaching sites. So on the left, um, you see that we're in a gymnasium with a basketball court. Um, this is a class at um, one of our sites at Lancaster, um, one of our institutions in Lancaster. And then on the right um, is the California Institution for Women, CIW. And that one, we're actually in sort of a classroom. We're in like a mobile uh, unit, um, which is like a great space for art making. But regardless of whatever space that we're in, we always make it work. We use whatever materials that we have. We find ways to be creative and we find ways to be innovative. Yeah, I also wanted to point out for the images on the left, <laughs> um, as you can see, um, when we're all wearing all black, we stand out amongst like our participants. So you can easily distinguish who's a teacher and who is a participant or intern. Um, and that's just, um, I just wanted to point that out as it's highlighted in this picture. Um, so, um, a lot of the things that we've been talking about has been prior to um, in-person teaching and due to COVID um, pandemic, we've had to rethink and um, just unsolve how to still continue um, providing art classes. And we've um, come up with distance learning. And so basically we are creating the same um, art classes we would have in person, but now translated on paper, and um, we call them um, packets, and we deliver them to several institutions, to all institutions that we were currently working with, um, and we offer the same um, exact um, courses. It's just that this time it's just a little more. Um, it's not in person as as it was prior to COVID. Um, we've also translated our packets in English and Spanish for our Spanish speaking participants. Um, and it's a communication that our program has to, uh, and the institution itself are in close communication um, in, in terms of um, you know, updating the roster and making sure we deliver the packets to the right participants and so forth. Yes, and so for the arts facilitator training, um, we, we wanted to continue offering it as well. And the, uh, we wanted to create a correspondence course version of it that was done entirely by the mail, through mail, through mentorship from uh, Prison Arts Collective team members and um, associated faculty. And so um, this was actually a vision of our program director long before um, COVID happened. Sorry to keep bringing it up, but yeah, long before <laughs> that happened. So it's been a program goal for a really long time. And so this, this uh, this kind of break in programming where we really had to figure out what we were going to do to continue offering classes to our participants was the perfect time to start developing this course. And so this was a major collaborative effort, the same as all these other projects. It was a huge collaboration to try to figure out what the best way to do this was. So um, this was a big um, collaboration amongst university professors, PAC teaching artists, um, college students, uh, returned citizens were, were actively involved in this as well. And uh, we were able to create a correspondence version of this course, which we're gonna be sending out for the first time in the near future. So this is gonna allow for our teachers that are interested in teaching to continue working on that goal and working with our program so that we can support them in providing mentorship, but also working with the institution they're at to eventually have a space and a time slot to um, teach their classes to their peers. And then the last one is the guest artist workshop. This is um, something that we're more recently developing. Since it was such a really popular part of our in-person programming, we wanted to find the best way to translate this experience over into a packet. So we have no access to Zoom or technology with the, our, our participants. Everything has to be done on paper through the mail, which um, can get boring really quickly. So we definitely get think strategically and we work together, we collaborate, we troubleshoot to try to find the best way to make our lessons as engaging and interesting as possible, um, especially for our participants in this time of where they're experiencing isolation that is uh, beyond what they are normally used to, right? So um, in the guest artist workshops, we are currently, uh, for to translate it to distance learning, we're working with artists throughout California to create packets based on their work, um, publishing an interview with them, sharing, uh, art examples of their work. And then also that all culminates into um, 
an art project that the students that receive this packet will be able to participate in. So more coming on that soon. We can go to the next slide. So here's a visual of some of the art material we also have been sending with our packets. Um, so we've uh, provided um, some color pencils. These color pencils that we have here have two ends, so that gives us more colors to provide um, with our packets as well an eraser. And we've currently just added um, graphite pencils in our packets. Um, it's put inside um, the packet itself. And with the packets, we also would like to hear from our students as well. We've provided a feedback form, which is the image right next to the color pencils. Um, that feedback form is really helpful for our, our teachers, our staff um, to really um, get a better improve each um, lesson or each packet um, each time around. Um, so typing out the packets, this is um, fairly new to a lot of us. And so we want to make sure that we're improving each time. So what we have, we ask them to circle one of the images um, of the faces, silly faces that we have there to see how they felt about that particular lesson. So we have scared, embarrassed. Um, we've also suggested if they wanted to create their own um, visual um, to also provide that as well on this sheet of paper. We've also have a quick checklist of where they can just answer um, the following questions, whether the directions were clear, um, if they were able to be creative and they can check mark neutral, agree or disagree or strongly agree. And then if they want to have uh, any additional comments about that particular lesson, they can also um, write it out at the bottom of this sheet. Um, so this is really helpful for us. So in the packet itself, we provide the art material. Um, we also provide them a security envelope and that's how they're able to give us back a feedback for the lesson or the packet that they um, worked on that that um, round. Yeah, it's funny because we thought uh, we always thought our supplies were limited before, but we see the packet we're allowed to send in now and it's not very exciting. But um, honestly, you'd be so surprised at what our participants turn out with the most minimal of materials. And so it's been a, a kind of innovative experience for us as well to figure out how do we design our lessons using the materials that we're allowed to send in. And the feedback forms are great because it allows our students to to actively be involved in their education. So they're letting us know what's work, what they what is working, what's not working, what they would like to see in future lessons. And we we tried to make it in a way that was universally accessible. So like the choosing the face, like if maybe um, the students aren't able to write um, or read these clearly, they can still respond to um, how they felt about this question through our the lesson through a, a kind of emotion or they can draw their own. So that was that was really important for us as well. And then facilitator training. So here's some like previews of what our correspondence course lo looks like. These are the cover pages that um, our, our SDSU intern Alvaro designed for us. And they, they came out amazing. So these are actually like the cover pages of the packets. Um, I'll try to explain a little bit about like how the correspondence course works. So on the left is like an introduction um, packet that um, the students would get to uh, learn more about the program and sign up for it and do that kind of thing. And then the program, the training is broken up into six sections and the students will receive one or two sections at a time. And then via mail, as they complete them, um, they will get the next packet. And so we're excited to see how this turns out. We're gonna be sending it out pretty soon. And then the last one was the guest artist series. And again, that one's coming soon. It's still a work in progress, but here's, here's a preview. And Michelle's actually here, the artist that's featured in that one. Um, here's a preview of what it was kind of going to look like. And we're still working on the content and gathering more artists for that. But we're really excited to see how this one comes together. And definitely check us out on social media or Facebook or through the No Labels, No Walls page to learn more about what we're doing for sure. Okay. I just, we just wanted to say thank you so much. It was so, uh, this is the second year that Prison Collective has come on and obviously things have changed. Um, I wanted to open up to questions uh, to start. Um, I had, we had a couple on the chat. Um, so our, it's very interesting. Marcus, this is yours. Do you want me to read it or? Yeah, and I, I can really ask that myself too. Okay, yeah. can, you, can you stop sharing the screen and that way everybody yeah. can see each other? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. 
thank you for this very very interesting presentation. I, this is very this is very 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 interesting. We have, we have this one project right now that it's been gone for two and a half years, and it's all about the arts facilitator program. We are trying to train the the prisoners to tutor a group to each other. If you have, if you know three chords from the guitar, you can show them to your friends, and you can you can play music or, or you can play chess or or uh, do art. And we have a lot of difficulties uh, for two reasons. Uh, when we went to uh, what we call Stonehouse Jail, which is prison, which is like the the most high level security prison, uh, I think there was a lot of. Uh, uh, contradictions with the security and the rehabilitation world. They just really didn't speak the same language sometimes. So, so there was a lot of, uh, it took a lot of time to gain the trust to work there. Uh, but the second thing that was the COVID-19 because it's just, it's just totally stopped everything. And now I got your idea that you can actually be pen pals. You can, you can, send, you can send mails. We never thought about that. That's a great idea. So, so I would be really interested about the training course, course program for art facilitators. And my other, other, other question is that uh, the first one is, is it, is it something that you can share? And the other one is that, is there any possibilities or places to use that facilitator, facilitating skills after the prison time? Is, is there some other area that you can go to and, and, and bunt? Because we know that when you get to the civil world, it's, it's, it's can, it can be very, very hard. And sometimes people get back to the old roots. Okay. So, yeah, so these... Yeah. Um, uh, I, I believe there's some information about our facilitator training program on our website. That that's the stuff that we have published um, for the public access. Uh, for the correspondence course that we're doing right now, is not fully complete, so we definitely don't have it uploaded anywhere at the moment. But uh, um, I'm hoping that we're able to find ways to share that with those that are interested in in doing some sort of mentorship or facilitator teacher training program like that as well. Um, but in regards to the skills like being used outside of the prison, outside of the classroom. We have had several former facilitators that were released from prison um, come work with us. Uh, we've had opportunities to provide paid roles for uh, returned citizens that have taken training that, to work with us and teach with us. And um, that's been a great way to do that as well. But um, some others that have taken facilitator training with us and have completed it and have since been released have also um, gone on to work with other non nonprofit organizations and are teaching with them as well. Um, so I, I definitely see how they're using, utilizing a lot of the skills that they learn in the class um, in their own uh, careers, which I think is awesome and a big goal of the program for sure. Yeah, I wanted to add um, creating is also problem solving. So a lot of the art classes um, help with that um, skill set that can easily be translated to other job opportunities that they're also interested. Um, so I think that's also something that art classes do help our participants kind of um, nourish that skill. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that. And, and uh, I want to make sure, yes, one of your facilitators is on the call right now, Stan. Um, uh, Hunter, I believe, is one of the people that have come out. Um, and I just want to make sure we include everybody. Uh, Daniel had a question. And then JP, I hope I get, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's your, your name, but if you have any questions, Kimberly, Michelle, we have the Prime Minister of No Labels, No Walls here today. <laughs> so any question, the whole idea is that we can connect together. So uh, any questions at all uh, from Daniel? I know you had one on the chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for it. It's a great conversation. Yeah, I'm representing Kukunori as well. So, yeah, my question was, it's quite a new thing to me, our therapy, but I just wondered what were the sort of typical benefits, uh, like improvement in self-esteem, awareness, stress reduction, and, and maybe do, the, do you use it to resolve such things as conflicts within the prison, or uh, does it help some, say, cognitive abilities or and how do you then therefore measure that impact do you sort of do, do things like questionnaires before and after of mental state and things like that or yeah that's my question 
I think our safe space activity really does help um, with the um, classes. So our safe space um, typically has been a lot of meditative um, practices. So we do provide that. Um, I think that helps even relieve the stress. Sometimes even creating art um, can be a little bit scary for uh, a lot of us. Even just holding a paintbrush or a pencil can be a little bit intimidating in the sense that we tend to criticize our own work <laughs> before we even start. So we do add that um, in terms to help um, provide us a calm and healthy and safe environment when we're creating our classes. And we also include that in our packets as well. Um, and each class has a different safe space activity or um, uh, mindful pause is also another way we've um, phrased it as well. Yeah, and about, about surveys, we do conduct pre and post surveys um, after our class and it allows students to kind of, they're kind of comparative. So like the, the pre-survey kind of matches up to the post-survey so we can see if they, if their, their uh, mood improved or things like that. Um, research in prison is notoriously hard because there's a lot of stipulations, there's a lot of hoops you gotta jump through to do that. Um, and it's something that our program is uh, working towards. In the near future, I think we have been getting a lot of approval to do some research just to look at the effective, effectiveness of our program, but the overall big question of, does our education in prison have rehabilitative properties? And mm -hmm. is, it, is it helping to reduce recidivism? And, those are some of the big, the million dollar questions that <laughs> we're hoping to start to tap into a little bit. But, um, oh yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, does, um, uh, cause we have about 10, 12 minutes. Does, I wanna make sure we bring in JP, uh, Stan, Kimberly, Michelle, do you guys, uh, the prime minister, does anybody have questions uh, for the panel or comments or I just wanna, up oh, prime minister. Thank you. I just wondered, once you've worked with them and they've been released from prison, I wondered what the reoffending rate was like. Is it lower or do you find it's higher because they, they enjoy the programme so much they want to come back for a second shot? I don't think we have that data. There hasn't been a lot of research done on that. And being a, again, being able to access that kind of information is is very hard to get the permissions to do that. And, but, and, um, yeah, for the European partners, I, I, everybody watching, the system set up in America is far different than the European model. So when Alex and Nancy are talking about, uh, it's hard for the, sorry, Alex, I'm just trying to bring context because when people haven't, like, we don't know what happens over there, et cetera, um, it's very different. So when they're trying to uh, get, um, uh, it's run very militarily where the Finnish system and the Nordic system is run, obviously not like that. So uh, just wanted to bring context. Sorry to interrupt, Alex, keep going on what you were saying. But yeah, it is our goal to try to find those statistics to see um, if what we're doing is effective and we believe it is. I mean, we see the, we see the in-person results of it, which is we're seeing more accepting communities, we're seeing broadened perspectives less stress, um, enjoyment and creativity. Um, those are the things that I see when I'm, when I'm teaching. Um, and I've been doing it for a couple of years now. So I've been working with some of the same students for a while. And so um, I, that, I think those are just as important as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else have a comment or question for Alex or Nancy? Yes, yes. I do, I do. Uh, I think we should definitely change some information we could do some collaboration. I actually just chatted uh, our, our project, which has a, its own arts facilitator program t uh, course material that we could actually share. But also we have a very good uh, survey questionnaire for uh, really uh, measuring the impacts on the people. And, and we see that the, the, the couple of the, the most benefits that are coming from this is 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 the is the question that do you express do do you experience uh, uh, inclusive uh, experiences do do you feel that you are belonging to something you can be part of something that's I think I think it's a very good question second one is are you less lonely than you were before you came to this project. And, and the third one is it's about uh, uh, alcohol abuse and drugs and, and that kind of stuff. Is it, is it decreasing or not? 
And fourth is, uh, can you see hope in the future more than before? So we have this kind of questions and, and, and we, we would be very interested if we can learn something from you guys also. Totally, yeah, we're always open for collaboration. Yes, very yeah. nice. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, just a story, Mehdi, uh, Mehdi and I went and Mehdi at the CIW, we just want to say how great their program is. Oh yes, and uh, um, I believe Stan was there um, uh, with us. And uh, yeah, we had a whole one day there um, about a year ago. At CIW, and it was just great to see the art and just to see what you guys all do. And mm. we've seen your work in Lancaster when we were there, working up there. Um, and it's just amazing uh, what you're able to accomplish. And mm. so we're just so excited that um, people all over the world can see what you're doing and hopefully collaborate with yeah. what you're doing in the and future. And the artwork was amazing. Yeah. I mean, and then, you know, the uh, last year after we were in the... Um, in the CIW, we were in the Blitz College. Pitcher. Pitcher, sorry, Pitcher College. And there was the uh, exhibition oh, of the artwork. Oh my goodness, that was so- It's wonderful. So, yeah. So really everybody nice. listening, please go to their website on the prison, if you want to say it, is it the Prison Art Collective or? PrisonArtsCollective.com. Perfect. And then we also have a Facebook and Instagram under the same the same handle. Just so please visit and go there. Um, is there anything, I guess the last question I, we have for you is, so one of the ideas of the festival is how, what do we all like, um, and Marcus was touching upon it, how can we help? So there's, there, you know, we all kind of are doing our own thing, but yet we're kind of all fighting and trying to move towards a, a, a more kind of interconnected world so we can kind of address these issues systemic issues and stigma. So what do you need from us? How can we help you? How can you support us? Like, what, what are you seeing that you need the, uh, uh, locally and internationally to do? Well, I'd say overall, I think it's really helpful to even connect in this way to bounce ideas off of one another, to see what, hear what other programs are doing, what they're struggling with, and just finding ways to to kind of uh, troubleshoot together, I think is one of the most helpful things for all programs in general. Um, and which has been something that's been happening a lot because of COVID is a lot of programs have been connecting and we're learning from one another. We're learning what's working, what's not working and how to troubleshoot some um, problems that we're facing because of the new restrictions surrounding um, prison security right now with uh, COVID that's happening. Um, so I think that's been something that has been like a really tangible way for people to get involved and help is um, for people working in similar fields, even if it's a community art organization, it doesn't necessarily have to be a prison one, sharing resources, um, finding, in addition to like art education resources, but also resources that um, released, or released um, recently released uh, prisoners can um, access are extremely helpful as well. That's something that is always helpful for students that are being released and they need some guidance and resources. Um, that's what I can think about, but Nancy, did you wanna share something? Yeah, um, some of the things I was thinking um, while Alex was talking is um, we would really appreciate, I mean, um, maybe some donations as well. We do have um, an art website um, and it, um, that would be very helpful with our program in terms of purchasing material, art supplies, um, printing. Um, that would be very helpful as well. Maybe also connecting, see where we can share the artwork um, that is created in our classes would be very helpful to our participants as well. So they can see their work being presented, maybe different parts of the world as well. So that would be something very helpful. Well, that's, a, that's fantastic. That could be something that definitely I think no labels, no walls can do. I want to just really briefly read two comments um, on the chat. So Brian said, and I know if Brian's there or not, maybe if you wanted to say it, um, but I'll read it. When you give space and empowerment for formerly incarcerated access, employment, housing, capital for business, for sit, oh, there you are. All right, mate, you want to read your comment? It's better than when I did it. Yeah, no, sure. I, and I was, um, first of all, thank you, Nancy and Alex, for the work that you do. Um, we at the Daniel Initiative do our, second biggest portfolio is in criminal justice transformation. 
Um, and so I had written that in response to what the prime minister of No Labels, No Walls has said that really we find when you give opportunities, like it sounds like this organization is doing, of outlets um, to express themselves as well as uh, to reduce, uh, um, to you know get access to housing, um, be able to vote, employment, um, the recidivism rate goes down. Um, and so what we find is it's more of a need of a cultural shift outside than the emphasis being we have bad people who never change. Um, we find that you know crime has been going down really to be honest since the 70s, but we have a criminalization problem, over, over policing problems sometimes in this country, um, which is why we lead, unfortunately, um, even though we, pr we provide 5% of the global population, we contribute about 25% <laughs> of the prison population. And so that's the power of what like Alex and Nancy are doing, providing space. And, and it's about amplifying then those type of outlets, um, even overseas. And, and uh, thank I you guys. I just I have want to just, just one, one more. I just want oh, to say, sorry. just 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 for uh, just for contradiction, there is not a possibility in Finland to serve jail more than six years, no matter what you do. Mm. That's right. You cannot be there more more than six years, even if you get uh, what 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 we call life sentence, which is a uh, like a ten years, mm. you will serve six. And I, always, I, you always get another chance. And that's that's exactly what we're saying. There's such a difference in the criminal justice system. I want to bring it, though, to JP, because you asked a question in the chat. Do you want me to read it or do you want to say it? I'll say it. So okay. I actually work with the Prison Arts Collective. I do the yoga meditation. I've been there for a few years. And I just wanted to see if Alex or Nancy want to talk a little bit about the videos that are now out in um, our, our institutions that we work in, but also I think it's about 33 different prisons in California right now. You want to share that one, Nancy? I think you worked on that one. Yeah, so we've asked um, some of our um, staff members as well. JP's also um, had a series and videos as well where she um, practices um, yoga and mindful moments in her videos. Um, those are being shared as well in our Facebook page, Instagram page, and also being showcased to our participants in some of the institutions. Um, can you, do you want to add more, JP, since you, I, I would like well, to hear from you. I wanted to bring it up because the thing that really just killed me was when um, the comment was mentioned about the loneliness. And I feel like from the moment we uh, realized we weren't allowed to go back into the prisons, it was like, what can we do to show them that we're still there for them? Mm -hmm. So we were creating videos before we even knew if we could, if they would be shown. And I believe that some people are so much more visual, like they want to see our faces. And when we're talking, we're talking to them. And they know like, that's my teacher. She still cares about me. She's still there. Or he's still there. And um, just a lot of things The the fact that now we can have them send us their feedback, and we can send them responses, um, just ways that we we're letting them know you're not alone. Hmm. Well, that's fantastic. And um, it's now 2.53. Um, so our next, our next event's coming up in about seven minutes. So if you all want, please stay because it's about civic engagement. Um, and it's kind of really what we're now kind of talking about is how do we engage? Um, uh, how do we support one another? How do we say that we're here for somebody? Um, you know, and I just think it's an important conversation to keep having, and I think it's going to lead into the next uh, next panel really nicely. So please uh, don't go anywhere because we can't. Okay, that's the truth. We can't. So so please don't go anywhere. Um, I want to just leave it with the final thoughts, final message, anything you want to say, and then um, and then just encourage all of everybody here. If you can't keep on this event, please stream the event on no labels no walls .net. Um, Thursday and Friday and Saturday, we have, I think, another 
30 hours or 20 hours of programming. We Are One has a, set, a separate set happening from UK, Scotland um, that people can join in. This festival is uh, partnering with. Um, so please uh, uh, join us on the on Tell Your Friends. The more people we get connected, the better. So that being said, that commercial I just said, what is your final thing you want to just say? And then we'll wrap it up. You can go, Nancy, if you want to. Oh, I want. <laughs> I just wanted to say if I if I could share one screen where it uh, provides all our social information for the last remainder of time that we have. So if anybody would want to oh. screenshot the image or um, take a picture of it from their phone, can I just share that one slide from our presentation? Yeah. Please. Do it. You can also li leave links to the chat window so people can check them out. I'll type in the website link in here as well. But I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for um, an awesome conversation and some dialogue going there. It's always great to, have, to connect, especially in these times of isolation for sure. Um, we were gonna do an art activity with this one, but the dialogue was so good. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. let's get that. <laughs> but thank you. I, I appreciate everybody showing up and, um, oh, and the organizers for creating the space for us to come together and connect. 100%. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, JP, for all the work you're doing, continuing to do. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you in some other events. Uh, and if you want, stay too. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Um, have a great, and we'll, we're going to stay on here. So if you guys all want to just stay, you can. Um, but let me just see if they've, uh, Marcus has switched us to the